All right, everybody, away we go. Welcome to today's call. It is Friday, as you know, my favorite day of the week because I get to spend time with you. This is August the 10th of 2018. Time is flying this year because you're all working so hard with me and I'm excited for the progress you're all making. Now, if you are just joining this call today and didn't happen to be on yesterday's series of calls, number one, if you're a mastermind member, you want to dig into the recording there. It's uh, over in the Facebook group. And also, if you are a Campfire member or you are a part of a team, we had a very important conversation that followed up the mastermind. And that was, I'm going through, uh, and I want you to understand what Campfire is all about. That's the gathering place bi-weekly where I hit the core training concepts. And it is important to be trained in the core and the basics of the philosophy here, which is what? Not something unique, but rather mastering the, mastering the obvious about our industry, meaning how a property actually gets sold. We call that a seller course. How a buyer goes through the pr process, we call that a buyer process, right? Or course. And then the agent business. This is what we're working on here on all of these phone calls. So I want you to understand it's a very clear philosophy that I'm trying to share that's core and basic. Now it's upon those basics that we arrive at some training like this that's more specific, tactical, technical work where you actually take those core principles out into the world and practice them, you come back here with real practical information, meaning you either have a recording for me, I like to play those whenever I have them. I don't know if my team in Ottawa will be on here today with some of those recordings, but they've been great at sharing those so that we could hear live what it's like. I get a lot of questions on inside sales and outside sales that I feel like there's deficient education by me to you, so I'm gonna stick very closely to that on these calls. So what I mean by that is I have espoused the virtue of knowing your core information, meaning if you don't know what I'm referring to in depth and you've been on these calls, you need to check yourself and go out there and find out what this seller course really is. And you need to read it letter for letter. And you need to look at the main seven steps and chunk those up so you can give a cheat sheet or a Reader's Digest version or a Cliff Notes, whatever you refer to the shortened version is. You wanna to refer to those things as well, right? Because that's the way the business really works. And the reason for that is now I can layer on top of that a conversation about scripting or the actual performance inside of a property when you are giving a listing presentation or you meet the buyer for the very first time out at a property. You can then layer in all of those things, okay? So it's important to understand that, all right? So let me just double check. Are we still interactive here? We good? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, good. Okay, awesome. All right, yeah. so, all right cool. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna get right after this. Um, who wants to be in the hot seat as we wait for people to roll in here today? Anybody want to take a jump in the hot seat and, and bring me a sales challenge no matter where it is and when it happened? Who's up? I'll wait today. I'll make you... Yeah, I kind yeah. of got one, but yeah. I think it, it's pretty... It's something we've definitely touched on before but um you know it's i think there are probably some other people doing isa work in here who have kind of been tasked with kind of cleaning a database and and it's kind of finding that line between you know do i is this lead garbage or do i pursue it further and i think i've got a pretty good um kind of just feel for you know when somebody is a waste of time and when somebody potentially is not a waste of time. Um, and, I, and I get there by just asking direct questions. Hey, and what, one line that I use that I think I heard from you or possibly one of the other mastermind members was, you know, hey, you know, I don't want to bug you too much, um, you know, but I do want to be there for you, you know, when you need our help. Right. When's the best time for me to follow up with you? Or are you realistically going to be purchasing or selling a home within the next year or two? And if the answer to that is a flat no, I'm cutting that person loose. Okay. Um, but if they give me kind of a maybe, or if they even vacillate it on it a little bit, you know, I'll keep them on and continue and continue like a minimal kind of level of follow up for somebody like that. 
Yeah, so, so are you asking me, do I think that's a standard? Let me, let me jump in there. I think that, uh, number well, one... standards are probably hard to define there, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, no, for sure, I have said all along, that's the line. I think that's pivotal, is because we're, we're always okay. over-trained to be too aggressive, and so, you, you know, it, it's always this scripting. Like, to me, what never... And I'm just speaking for myself, okay? I'm not disparaging anybody. I'm just saying, for me... I've always felt that I was there to serve, right? I was there to help. I mean, look, there's been times when I've been plenty transactional and saw people, you know, as the next opportunity. There's no doubt, but my heart was always in helping them. So, you know, you, you're always balancing those things. So the reason for the line is so many people are fear are in fear. I just caught a new podcast that'll come out in the next two series. And that was about what we talked about yesterday was managing that fear, Right? And so in a sales context, taking that fear over here, what are we afraid of the most, Patrick, would you say? I mean, if you were just going to say, when I pick up that phone, and because I'm going to get to why I gave that advice on saying that line, why these certain scripted lines matter. So, so tell me what you would be afraid of when you pick up that phone. What's the worst thing that can happen? Okay. The worst possible thing that can happen is somebody can just uh, chew you out. Okay. And, you know, and for, I for mean, what, the right. That can happen is some, is to feel very bothered and feel super upset that you had the audacity to um, interject into their own personal time. Okay. Or bother them at work or bother them during lunch. Um, those, I mean, but you know what? That's the good news. Right. That that's the worst thing that can happen. Because in my world, that's not that bad of a thing. Yeah. That could happen. However, uh, however, so that, how, however, yeah. it is rejection. Okay. So yes, as sir. much as yeah. theoretically speaking, we can sit here and say, look, um, that's the worst thing. And we can all sit here as a training group and say, that's the worst thing that can happen. You know, um, you know, so get over it. We can say those things to each other, but I'm realizing more and more and more, that's not a fair thing to say to people because the actual human event of that moment is painful. And it's, you know what, like, yep. thinking about it too, you know, let's just say you're starting up like a two hour block of calls and like the first person chews you out, me make another call, and then let's just say the second person chews you out. I could absolutely be see getting deflated by being like, Jesus, you know, like, uh, you, you know, you could it, if you start getting pounded down by it, I could see it very much being like a heavy burden to carry. You, hey guys, we have live mics here. Just remember that, please. So if you can make sure you you um, block up your mic there um, in the background, that'd be awesome. So, so yeah, well, look, I, I think it's telling, you know, that, that you feel that way. I think also when Laura was coming back to do the job of inside sales, after having done it for a long time, she said she didn't want the job back. And, and I was talking to Eddie Wynn this week about, you know, that concept and that, that fear or overwhelm of having to get back on the phone and go there. So what I said to him is the same I'd say to everybody. Let's just change the way that we see this event, okay? So if we change the way we see the event, I think we can train for it better and that it's not so painful. See, the reason we see the pain of that rejection, I believe, is because we start at the wrong level. We start with the script first, right? That's the, that's the thing that we do. So we, we lean in and we say, look, I'm just going to start off and can you train me on the script, the universal callback script. And we're having this conversation with Sarah Corey and Tarek and Steve up in Ottawa this week. And, and Tarek asked me, well, don't you believe in a universal callback script anymore? Well, I said, well, in the beginning, to deal with that challenge of interrupting somebody's life when you have no idea what their immediate in that moment context is, yes. There's no doubt about it, Pat. So when I arrive at that moment, I recognize I might have gotten the guy or gal on the phone who just got bad news, who got yelled at by their boss, whose kid just caused them a problem. All of the things, let's say it's 50-50 chances. It's like rolling the dice. I'm going to get somebody in a good mood or a bad mood. Okay, But if I arrive there, and I used that analogy the other day, imagine that you and I are the doctors and nurses of the real estate world. We don't know, coming through that emergency room door, how bad the situation will be. We could have an incorrigible um, client, quote unquote, coming through the door, uh, bursting through. 
and they could be yelling and screaming, ranting and raving, and we know so desperately as the doctors and nurses that we can help them. We can triage that moment, perhaps save their real estate life, but yet they continue to reject it. That can be frustrating, but you, you have to embrace that. You have to lean into that and say, well, I should have expected that there would be moments like this that I would have to have unbelievable patience beyond what I believe I'm capable of and unbelievable perseverance beyond what I'm capable of until I am certain that I tried everything in that moment. And remember, this is only a phone call in this context. I tried everything in that moment to help them. And no matter what I did, they eventually hung up on me. Well, that's not you then in that moment, right? You know that's not you because you were diligent to go all the way and then some to arrive at that moment. You got me? Oh, yeah. So, so now let's go back to scripting. I think scripting matters in that moment. Hey, Patrick, it's Danny Griffin calling from Griffin Realty Group, and I'm calling you because you came into my website, because you asked me for a home evaluation, because your home expired. So that is a very, very important first beat, I think, all the time. I, I don't think you can ever not go to that beat and give context. I think sometimes when people stutter through that or some scripter, you know, script teachers tell you, hey, it, is this Danny? You know, and they, and they start to get into this more, this tricky way of engaging in conversation, I think that makes you yeah. relatively more nervous because now you're trying to remember this script, whereas I think it's very normal to script out and keep yourself under control with, hey, here's who I am, here's where I'm from, I'm calling because, and because is a trigger word. So because triggers, yeah. perhaps, my guess is, or my evaluation of the word because and why it's powerful, is it insinuates that maybe something's in it for them, right? There's a reason. Yeah, and I think it's really, really hard to get mad at somebody who, you know, jumps on the phone. Correct. Explains exactly who they are and why they're calling, and then follows that immediately up with, and here's why I'm calling to help you. Yes. Or here, you know, I'm calling because I think I might be able to help you. Yes. And, you know, if you can hit those three beats, basically before they have a chance to react right. to the initial idea of, oh crap, I'm talking to a stranger on the phone. Right. You know, you say, you know, you explain who you are, why you're calling, and here's how I can help you. Perfect. All of a sudden, you know, you'd have to be, you know, really angry or really a jerk to react in a very negative way to that you know i mean or just or just so far yeah go ahead called i'm getting really good reactions from people just because i'm coming from a place of helpfulness that's right and you know maybe they'll say no to me but nobody's really gotten upset C correct because you, you most likely with and i'd love you to record some of your calls and give them to me so that i could hear them um and, and really lean in Here's, that's the first beat. It's so easy to stay scripted from there. You know, here I am, here's where I'm from, calling because you have this context and I wanna help. I think that's for everybody. That should be an opening mindset thought, even when you're face to face. Hey, I just happen to be sitting at the table next to you and I hear that you're struggling, you know, thinking about selling your house. So I don't mean to interrupt you, but I've got something that if you don't mind giving me some contact info, I'd love to send you. I mean, you could use it in any context. It's that pattern interrupt where who doesn't welcome a helpful stranger? You ever walk down the street and someone with a big smile just holds the door for you um, or says something nice to you? It just changes everything you're feeling at that moment. It's extremely disarming. I mean, if somebody's really upset and really miserable, that might be a different context, but for, for the most part, it's not. So I think if you meet it, as what a great opportunity for me to help. But I know that helping a lot of these people can be stressful because in the beginning they don't know me, then I have to deal with it. But let me go to the next beat with you since we're on a roll here, okay? I think the next beat is very challenging because in the concept of this quote unquote universal callback script, that concept is that I think what's universal about it, which I'm a huge fan of as you know, is a strategy and a structure and a professional way to go about it, 
right? So, so thinking about the home seller course or structure of the help, home buyer course, or if I'm recruiting on that phone call, an agent course, I have that core foundation behind me of how I'm actually going to help you if you'll let me. I have these three core strategies and depending who you are, I'm so excited to deliver them to you. But how do I get from that reactionary moment after the intro, which most likely, because we're foreign to them, is a little bit of a rejection or a standoffishness at, at its least, right? So in its least mode, Pat, they're going to be standoffish, right? In its extreme mode... Yeah, I mean, when you go yep. to uh, any store and a sales associate comes up to you, you, know, you, I think all of us have a slight moment of, eh, kind of leave me alone. I'm, I'm shopping, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing my thing here. Exactly, you know, but all, if you... I know what I need to... Exactly, but if you've ever walked into something like a Nordstrom's where the culture revolves similarly around this discussion here, where, where they give with a sense of gratitude, they know that, okay? You're already in the store, you're in the department that they're at, and they just want to acknowledge you with a smile. I'm not saying every Nordstrom salesperson that I've you know, encountered has always been exactly like that, but pretty close. Pretty close. They're not going, they're going to read you first before they come rushing in with their agenda. Of course we have an agenda. We're running a business and the business is, is around helping buyers and sellers, right? There's no doubt about it. But, but quite frankly, why don't we approach a phone call or a live presentation similarly? Why are we always rushing? I believe it's because we feel insecure about our preparedness. I think that's what it is. Now, I think it's far easier to be fully prepared on seven steps of a selling process, six steps buying, seven plus the eight bonus section on agency. I think if we'll just more, do more studying of the universal way that buyers, sellers, and agents need help, I think that gives you a level of security that at least, I'm not gonna say it solves everything, Pat, but at least it clicks us up a level where we're contented that, that, okay, look, I'm going into this conversation on the phone prepared, right? Whereas a script, it's sort of like, it's a technique or a tactic to get a conversation going. But it's not the security of the moment to say, I've got the goods to deliver. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I mean, if you, I think it, having a script is great, but if, if you have nothing um, that goes deeper than the script that you're using, it's like you're just you're walking they, a plank off of a ship. There you go. Because a conversation will, will take a turn or the person will say something you don't expect. And if you're not, you know, ready to engage and you're just only ready to read through a script, you know, the rug's going to get pulled out from under you at some point and you're going to be stuck. Uh, so hold on, so hold on, hold on. I loved your analogy. Perfect. Hold on, I loved your analogy and I'm not letting that one go. Say that again about walking the plank. I've never heard a more powerful analogy. Say it again, please. Well, if you're, yeah, so using uh, a call script uh, and, and depending on it solely for what you're gonna say on a phone call is kind of like walking the plank because when you run out of script, you're gonna run out of plank. And we all know what happens next. So um, I think it's important to, you know, just be ready to have a conversation with somebody and be ready for the unexpected. Even if, even if you're a really new uh, inside salesperson with, you know, no, with not a whole lot of real estate background, you have to be ready to say, oh, that's a great question. And um, I'm happy to get back to you uh, ASAP with an answer to that. I don't have the answer right now. You, you know, you got to be ready to say things like that. Because if you want to go straight script, it'll work sometimes, but it's not going to work every time. There's no doubt. And look, a scripts still work to the extent that they, you understand why you're doing that. Like, where are you trying to arrive? This is always that North Star. I mean, ultimately the North Star, in my case, is to create a happy past client. We call them happy griffins. That's the ultimate goal, right? But, but, I, but I think really what's even more important is that I wanna really have people understand, Pat, that it's just a technique. 
You know, language, trigger language, influential language, all that stuff, it's effective and it's a technique. But again, what I found when, when we were doing those recorded calls with the team in Ottawa, that, that I found the guys were disconnected from why they were doing this, right? I found them to be falling into, and, and what, what happens when that's your orientation to the North Star, it's much more transactional and you've, you stopped listening to the person on the other end of the line. And the irony is, as you're listening to those people authentically, you hear more clearly what they need help with and you make your scripted adjustment. Because it's sort of like, it, it, it's like a journey into the woods. In the introduction, it's clear, Pat, there's a path in the woods. But then you get to that next beat of their reaction and the path gets a little bit more blurry and the trees and the pine needles start to blend. And then ultimately, they take you way off into the poppy fields with Dorothy and you better have that buoy for where you're at so you can bring everybody back to a place of structure, right? That's really important. And I think that's, if you saw this conversation going like that, then people that are so regimented about scripting would understand that, hey, prove me wrong send me all the conversations where you are able to maintain such a level of control no matter what the circumstance on the other end, no matter what the personality, that you just marched in step every time. You're just not gonna be able to do that because the variable on the other side is not, they're not privy to the way they're supposed to behave according to you and your script, right? So, but, let me come back to this. Structure, knowing where I want to arrive, the only place I can reasonably arrive on the phone every time is whether or not they are looking to do something sooner or later, which comes back to how to deal with your question. Hey, some of my agents are struggling with deciding whether somebody is, well, I don't like to say worth it because what I'd like to say is whether they will give that agent, you, me, a chance going forward or not in a reasonable amount of time. And so, Pat, when I originally built the follow-up system in Infusionsoft, my thought was, hey, we've got some of these internet leads, they could take 36 months to develop, so I better build a system that considers really being able to follow up forever, but with a clear idea of 36 months. Well, reasonably speaking, as I continued to work on my business, I started to say, well, wait a minute, why am I building it so much out there? I'm letting the tail wag the dog. The type of lead that comes in from the internet definitely takes more because they started a more whimsical position. What if I could be better and faster at helping people who are closer to doing something? So it becomes this concept of, well, well and, and I get this question all the time about now business. Everybody says, I want now business. Well, great, I have an idea or two for you right this weekend. You don't have to go and worry about what somebody's going to do over the course of the next three years because you could go right into the field physically and to a great extent even eliminate the entire lead disposition. In other words, you can go straight to, will you become a prospect of mine or not by going to an open house? No, I will not. I have a realtor I'm working with. Yes, I would like to potentially get some help from you. Then going and door knocking on an expired, I know that's an extreme, but I'm trying to be the extreme. Go up to the door expired and say, look, I happen to cover this neighborhood and, and I check MLS all the time and I saw that your property came off. I don't know whether it was intentional or not, but I think, I think this can help you and I want to give it to you personally. So you see the person right here that gave it to you. Do you think there's any possibility you might relist? Because if so, I'd like to consider you one of my prospects that I can follow up with and take you to the next level. Because beyond this core information is the specialized information for your house. Because your situation's different than everybody else's. Same with the buyer at the open house. Have you been pre-qualified? What features are you looking for? So it's always that opportunity to just take a step back and say, where am I at in the funnel versus the script? And the funnel of what? Relationship building, right? There's nothing wrong with calling it a funnel because it keeps guardrails. Right, Patrick? If I have guardrails, I have a greater sense of, of being inside them and not way off. And guardrails can help me bring predictability to a process that has this wild vari um, variable called humans who may or may not want to make right now 
the biggest decision most of them will ever make in a lifetime, which is buying or selling a piece of property. So I think there's a full thorough discussion of, of why core beliefs matter a lot. A lot of people think they're not practical or pragmatic and help you get now business. I'll argue just the opposite. They bring the fear down because Gail's good at reminding me of this. Certainty is a human need. And so we're always trying to go for certainty. So why don't we start with us being more certain about core philosophies, using scripts to stay inside the guardrails, not to beat a perfectly trodden path, but to keep us inside the guardrails so that the core philosophy is under the journey, the script starts really, really clear, and then it goes out, but we can bump up against it. Hey, you know what? I forgot to ask you while we were talking. What do you think your timing might be to do this because I don't want to be a pest. I want to follow up appropriately. And there's that line that I gave you before, right? But, I, but I, I'm always yeah. feeling, I just have to get my own compass, right? And go, uh-oh, something doesn't feel right in this conversation. I think I'm into it for about 15 minutes and I'm lost. I've got to bring this back into the middle of the, you know, the forest path here before I'm lost. Well, how do you do that? Well, where am I at with coming to the result on whether this is going to be a follow-up uh, opportunity or not? Go ahead and ask me questions about that. Give me your thoughts, your reaction. But that's the narrative on how you layer this, I believe. I mean, I, uh, I completely agree. I think uh, a script is necessary. Uh, you know, even, you know, a checklist. You know, what do I want to, what's, what, why am I calling this person? And what information do I need to establish in order to have this be a successful call? Because I like what you said, you know, you know, you're in, you're having a conversation with with a buyer or seller, and before you know it, you're talking about their, you know, plans for traveling or their dog or who knows what, and you got to go, oh wait a minute, okay, hold on, I need to figure out, you know, have you been pre-qualified by a mortgage lender yet or what have you? So I think just having that script again as kind of guardrails to keep you focused on. Uh, the real purpose of the call is, is really important. Um, but you have to be able to have a conversation with somebody, that an authentic conversation um, from person to person and not just a robotic conversation that, um, that's going to sound unauthentic. And I think, people, I think people are very good at picking up on things like that naturally. Just, I think if people can kind of just feel whether or not you're being genuine and for sure that you are coming from a, a place of helpfulness. There's no doubt about it. We all, we, we, that's an onboard weapon of ours is our intuition to determine whether we're facing the, you know, the forces of good or evil, right? I mean, for sure. We, right. that, that's, that's at the core of human beings. So why do we forget that in this moment? And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to segue here. Leslie posted something and I'm going to get to Tim's as well uh, online. Um, so Leslie says, a bad habit, all too automatic in my thinking, comparing myself to other agents. It's a bad place to go because it too often makes me feel worse rather than better. It's that comparing yourself thing. I go out, uh, I go there out of habit. Need to be aware and not go there or focus on why I'm, uh, I'm a good choice for them. Again, and let me speak to Leslie's point there. It's, it'll sound weird as a harsh critique and it's not. But that is a selfish disposition, so it's easy to get over because, whoops, sorry guys, somebody's got a real loud noise there. Sorry, I had to mute a, a, a mic in Palo Alto, so I don't know who that was, but it was super loud. So let, let me just go back to this for a second. The most important thing that I see here, Leslie, as I look at this, is that's all about us. Okay, I remember getting that advice about public speaking. I forget how long ago it was. But you walk into a room and most people have this unbelievable fear of public speaking, which is definitely rooted in the fear I told you about, which is the fear of embarrassment, which I believe is rooted in the fear of not being perfectly prepared, which you can't do, so here we have this mess. So how do we unravel that? If you study, okay, the discipline of studying core philosophies, which in this case I've made as simple as I could. I think I've got it at the fifth or sixth grade reading level where you could read three core philosophies for buyers, sellers, and agents, and you should be able to have at least an intelligent conversation around those strategies. If you need even easier, we've made infographics, which are cheat sheets that you can use. Say, geez, I'm, I'm still learning this, but 
This is the order of things. So that reliance on the information that is important to anybody selling for an example is what you are nothing more than the bearer of. You, your importance in that moment is only as the bearer of information, the provider. That's all you are. And, and that even if you are at, at an entry level understanding of that, it's still better than theirs. I don't care how many people say they're savvy at selling real estate. Well, I've sold six properties. Well, great. I've sold six in a week before. And you know what? I was still not understanding the, the process that I was going through. I was doing it on muscle. And that makes it too much of a hobbyistic approach. So now going back to the public speaking, what somebody said is just speak to that one person in the room who is in desperate need of the provision of the information you're about to provide. Or that one line that you don't think means much, you drop to them and it changes their life. Because that's the reality of this situation. Is that regardless of the yelling and the screaming and the gnashing of teeth, you're gonna provide some information that whether they use you or not, you've empowered them, you've made their life better, and you just have to believe that that is going to magnetically attract back to you all the good business that you would ever need. I can sit here and preach about it because that's exactly how my business runs. We absolutely believe and we keep trying to go deeper into that belief that by giving somebody information, even if it's not a good day for me, I still got it to them. Even if Laura forgets a piece of it, she still got a lot of it to them. Whatever the case is, we give it. And that's the true altru altruistic approach. And the selfishness is that you get rewarded with the magnetic attraction backwards. But it's also a filter because... There's a funny way about people coming to you that should and those that shouldn't going away. But even your comment here is, is I think it's too much of a burden for you to change in, in that context. I think you have to change your whole perspective. And I think you have to see yourself as a nurse that is an obligation. It's like the Hippocratic Oath in medicine. No matter who it is, I will serve them. No matter what kind of money they have, I will serve them. If somebody indigent walks through the door of the, you know, the emergency room, I will serve them. Why is that them? And not us. We're still serving people, them physically, us emotionally perhaps, whatever it is. So I would say to you, I, I, stop trying to kill the habit by, by controlling it. Just take a whole different approach to deliver information that's about them. And you realize that that's going to empower them. And just get over the fact that you stop judging the information and whether it's good enough for them. Stop judging it. It is. And then some. And just give it. Next, um, Tim said, the commander's intent. Timmy's, uh, thank you for your service. As always, I like to say that out loud in front of other people. A Marine, right? So, uh, commander's intent. The common idea in the Marines or the military, if staff, okay, and he puts in parentheses, ISA, has a clear idea of the commander's intent, the mission gets accomplished. Clear definition of goal and let them take it home. Okay, good. So I think... A global, not Danny's commander's intent, but a global North Star commander's intent for the business would be to say, look, the number one vision, it's ironic on the Facebook group, it's up behind me here because it was the exercise. If my primary aim, which it is personally, is to be a person for others, can be translated into a vision, it's to help as many people as possible, and then I simply chose the context of real estate. So I arrived there pretty easily. Now the how is, well, I have to know what my tent, intent is with a seller. But the commander's intent is to help as many people as possible, okay? And clearly in the Marines, these guys are tactically prepared all the time how to, you know, clean your gun and break it down into pieces to make sure that you're there with, you know, what you have to, to work with. And so I need to do the same. I need to know what machinery I'm going to use or information is replaced here for sellers for buyers, for agents. So as the tactical person to fulfill the helping as many people, you've got to get rooted in that core information or, or and I hate to call them weapons, but, but the things that lift people up. And those are the core content pieces. And again, I just took my best pass at chunking up what universally happens and said, why don't we just go help people master the obvious, which is not so obvious even to us. I think that's really, really important, okay? So Pat, you want to add to any uh, of that between those two things? Um, I like uh, I like 
like the analogy, um, and you know, I one of my favorite math teachers uh, in college referred to it, you know, as tools. You know, you got a toolkit that's right full of things you can do in order to solve a problem. And I think it completely translates into ISA work, where like you're going into a call, you got your toolkit full of, I got a you know six point buyer strategic plan, I got a seven point seller strategic plan. You know, basically, no matter who I'm calling in a real estate context, can benefit from my knowledge of those things. Um, so taking, you know, a half a day really to really internalize it, um, I think would be incredibly helpful for everybody on this call or even just refreshing it for yourself. Um, you know, just fill up your tool bag with stuff that you can go to work with and, um, and go help people. Patrick, it's even more than that. It's like the gym. Stop going to the gym at 52 years old and I'll tell you what happens pretty quickly, Right. It's this conditioning thing. Voltaire and I were just talking about it. And, and that was always the intent of the campfire work. Because we, we talk very specifically in a sales context right here, right? But the sales context can go into scripting. It can go into ob objection handling. It can go down into expireds, physical. It can go in a lot of different directions. But underneath all of that are the tools. And they're the core foundational tools. And so the campfire's intent is, and, and you notice what I did yesterday, and I'm going to share that. I'm going to give that away to the public uh, of the TRC family, extended beyond the coaching program, because it's just general information that says, look, here's the philosophy by, by why, uh, for the reason why you need tools. I mean, we're always training on these tactics, but we never have the foundational bag of tools that as a default, when the plan in the Marines foxhole has gone awry. I have to fall back on some very primitive core foundational pieces to survive, right? I mean, that's what I have to do. And so when I get lost in the woods, let me just look down at my compass and say, oh, here's where we're at in that relationship with that difficult seller who's been really struggling because they're really stressed out and not hearing. I just need to go back and tell them that we're inside the guardrail still, that we're in the communication phase, and I know the communication is a little bit harsh from the outside, that you know people don't like their house for this reason or that. So I'm going to go back and say that's the communication that we have to deal with. And I'm going to lean in with you. I'm not going to run away. We're either going to need to get it painted or we're going to have to make it discounted or we're going to have to get it priced out. Whatever we're going to have to do, we're going to have to lean in and solve that issue. But we're still inside the guardrails of the strategy. See, no matter where you are along the process, you can always come back to core. So, so you'll see it on the coaching calls too oftentimes with the mastermind. Mastermind members will run away with a specificity. You'll hear it. And Gail was expressing it beautifully yesterday. It's this conditioning. And sometimes we've been told from the outside a, a thing, well, this is the way it works. And that person's wearing the white lab coat, so they have authority. And we just assume and we stop questioning it. I think when you go back to, you know, continue to question, am I really helping this person? Right? Am I really helping them? And by saying this thing on right. a script or doing this thing or bragging about my resume, am I really helping them? Am I, am I looking into their eyes and seeing that they're feeling helped and they're nodding with me and, and we're, we're connecting? Because if I'm not, then something's wrong. And I better fall back to the basics of my philosophy, fix myself, reorient, and get this thing right. And I think that's really critical, right? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah. Danny, Gail. What, do you, what do you say to people that don't, that are, well, they're afraid to do they said, I just can't do cold calls. Well, I mean, what, great. I, mean, I love the question. Don't try it. Well, let's say they have and it didn't work. But yeah. What's something that that will allow them to try it, reimagine it again? Yeah. You know, get where they can. Because most of the calls aren't cold calls. Let's just say that you're calling probate. Which I don't know. For me, it's really simple. But I, I think when in, in the beginning it wasn't. Yeah. And I had all those nervous, fearful sure. feelings. Because sure. Because I was thinking about myself. Sure. About myself. But how can you just, you know, what would be a good idea? Let's all get together and let's, at the office, let's start calling and, and help one another. I mean, what would be a good community effort for that? Well, well the concept, if you're going to do it with your group and you've just been creating this fabulous supportive culture, I recommend something that I heard in the book Scaling Up, which is called The Huddle, right? 
And and so uh, yeah. I witnessed a huddle when I was away on vacation. Um, uh, there was a certain event that would happen each night and there was a huddle going on in the side of the room. And I just found that imagery to be very powerful. So if you're going to do it together, I think it's just a huddle up. Everybody pulls their chairs in a little bit close and you just say, look, we're getting the vision. Let's reestablish why we're about to do this hour's worth of calling, okay? Uh, the vision is that we're gonna help as many people as we can tonight. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna let them know that we have these core philosophies that if they'll just let us get them to them, they'll see how the process works and they can organize. And if they need us beyond that, fabulous, we can't wait. But I think that just quick huddle that sets the North Star again clearly, because most of the time when we sit down, it's like what I was just giving, the, the advice I was giving to Leslie right there, was we, we just don't take that beat to reorient our North Star in front of these event-like things. For example, if I'm sitting in front of a house and I'm about to go li give a listing presentation, I take a beat, even though they're looking out the door and they see me and they've opened the front door, I take a beat and I open up my folder and I look at my materials and I make sure that I have the compass of the seven steps, I have the full course, I have the pricing it right information, and I just reorient myself that I'm here to serve them with this information regardless of the outcome. And I just take that little personal huddle with myself. So I think you can have it in both ways. Let's call it a beat or a breath or a huddle when it comes to multiples. Just reorient towards the fact that you are here to help. You do have wonderful information to share that will guide them to a point where then they're seeing you in this context and they'll begin to engage you with questions. When you run out of tarmac, as I say, and you just don't believe that there's any more left, you just say, look, those are some good questions that I wasn't able to answer tonight, but I want you to understand I am very resourceful. I'm going to leave here and immediately research them, and as soon as I have the answers, go there, okay? That's the methodology for orienting yourself. But next, part two of my answer to you, language matters. And as you just said, cold call, okay? Cold call. I think it's a fair terminology that crops itself, you know, its ugly head, or you called it gremlin beautifully. You were very articulate this week, my dear. Um, you said, you said, you said gremlin. And so the image, see for me, I'm a big picture guy in my head. So I see this gremlin yeah. popping up with these nasty gnarly teeth and saying, ah, it's cold call time. And, and, and immediately you got that little devil in your ear saying, you can't make cold calls. These people are gonna be really mad when you interrupt them. Who are you? You don't have enough training to do this. You can't really help them. Those little foundational courses don't work. So the minute we see cold, right? It conjures up this other, this, this runaway train of gremlins that just are laughing at you saying, there's no way you can do this. But what if we just say, it's the help call time. We're gonna pick up the fall, yeah, right? Funny. It's the help call time. We're gonna to get together yeah, as a and team. It's like saying prime. You, you tell that to your brain. You tell your brain, I'm gonna try it. Right. And that's all your brain's gonna do. It's never gonna accomplish the thing. You got I it. I talk to my kids about that too. And then they laugh. They go, Mother, that's just language. And, so, yeah. and, and language matters because it's really a lot to do. I think you were talking about it earlier about your belief system. So if we call this, Hey, a community calling time, and if we did it in a community, I'm I'm just I'm thinking as I'm talking. Keep going. And then, Keep going. And then when they're by themselves, then maybe they'll feel like, hey, this is helpful. I'm helping. Well, I like that, Danny. Well, I love that. Well, here's what I'll suggest. Number one, if you took a word, okay, uh, of you just took a, a, yeah. a list and you wrote down a lot of ugly words to you individually on one side, just draw a line down the middle okay. of the yellow paper. Put a lot of ugly words down. Read them aloud and slowly and see how you feel, right? See how you feel. Then on the other side, write down a lot of positive words. Say them out loud and see how you feel. And now you'll have the proof that language matters because you will have changed your body chemistry instantly by the way that you think because of the psychosomatic connection. So change the language. This is a huddle, and I liked what you just said. When it's the group, 
we're going to do our community service. See, we always think as realtors, our community service is to, to go, go down to the local boys and girls club and sponsor an event. And it still is that. But it begins much closer to home. Our community service, if you're a servant's mentality business or a business of significance, is to pick up the phone and do the community a service of educating them about how to buy and sell real estate. And if you want to go another layer, talk to them about how's the market because that's what they all want to know anyway. So you've been in these community service calls from which will birth potential relationships. Hey, you won't believe it. During community service tonight, I actually got somebody who wanted me to put them into MLS to get solds around them. I had somebody who was sick and tired of all these online apps and wanted me to put them into direct MLS. It's almost a pleasant surprise if we look at that, right? Yeah. Make sense? I think, um, yeah, I think people are stopped immediately by that word. Uh, I hear it so many times from people. No, I can't do cold calls. And I'm thinking, I hardly ever do cold calls. What I do is I'm calling, and I guess maybe when I'm calling my farm, but at the same time, I'm thinking, well, I'm calling my farm. They need my services. They don't want to say, well, it's the market. And then I can engage in a conversation. It's not all about that appointment. It's all about building that relationship along the way. Make the appointment, but understand you have to listen. So that script is important. Know you're awesome while you're there. Yep. Use your because we all read fanatical prospecting. You got to have those conversations. I loved your uh, blog that you had the last week, and I actually talked about that at the staff meeting to keep a cohesiveness between our sales training campfire and our staff meeting. I'm guided by you as well, and so and I tell everybody, you know, here you are. You're getting trained way before you get your license, yeah. and now you can hit the ground running because we'll onboard you. And maybe just having a community, I'm just talking out loud again, Keep going. a community time where we all get together, whoever wants to do it, and just experience it. And then see if they like the experience or whether they think they can do the experience. But yeah, just, you've got to experience it, right? That's right. Absolutely. Well, they, well, there's the thing. See, this is interesting. You just made me think about how dangerous language is. I'm going to take it to another extreme. And, and you know, I, I thump... Uh, trying to help people with the truth in this industry, and that's been my endeavor ever since I first wore a coaching um, mantra. I, I, I just say this. The, why are we always, and you said this again, yesterday was a big day for you in a lot of ways, um, but, but you said this. You had accepted some certain doctrine that was taught to you. Not that there wasn't a lot of truth in that doctrine about how to do real estate, and not that you didn't get there, but, but a lot of people that have agenda and it's not their fault. They just have to keep it in a very narrow lane because the further they go out, the more they get confused, right? So when somebody has an agenda, there's nothing wrong with listening to it, but the ability to process it and then, as you said, experience it. What is my real experience in this with the other human being? So, so again, I think the doctrine that's more generally what works is universal. I don't think we have to have this coaching program fight that one or this one. I think the concept of helping people to the best outcome possible is the only doctrine we ever need. Now, to be a great observer of what works is the only coaching we'll ever need. And we chunk that up and memorialize it, hold on to it. So, so for example, why do we keep calling it cold calling night? And we have to have pizza. And you might even have to have a drink, Gail, before you get on the phone. You might have to get a, li a little bit drunk, Gail, before you get on the phone to conquer your fear. Think about how absurd that is, right? Whereas if we just took the language, hold on one sec, if we just took the language and changed it and said, when you join my company or my group, we have community service night on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we huddle and, and we pray that we're gonna go out and help as many people as we can. And we do it with these really basic philosophies about buying and selling and being able to give them a quick answer on how's the market. And that's all you need to accomplish here. Oh, psst, you might just find that they need and want further help. And so if they do, let me show you the outcome here. The outcome is this, right? Now, if there's no possibility, we want to know that too because we don't want to put them into a further database where we're bothering them, Patrick, right? See how simple it becomes? But the narrative of what we're about to be engaged in really, really matters. If it's community service, everything changes. There's no more cold. 
there's just no more cold, right? I love that. And who doesn't want to do community service? Exactly. Does. Exactly. And, exactly. You want to feel... I love the wording. I love that, Danny. I know that you've come up with something fantastic. Cool. Well, you asked me a good question, so you helped me. Go ahead, Patrick. I cut you off there. I, I just wanted to make a comment um, to, to Gail, and uh, hopefully, you know, you're... You know, any of those team members might be on the call today who, you know, don't want to do cold calls. I just want to share an experience because I think maybe, you know, just seeing some real life experience stuff might help people get past that wall. Um, and that is, um, you know, once a year in my neighborhood, we have a block watch party where we get like a table in the middle of the street and everybody comes together and it's kind of a potluck sort of situation. And there's a house on our block that's for sale. And the, the agent has been calling everybody in the neighborhood every time They've had an open house, and every time they, they overprice it, so they're, they've also been doing calls to everybody every time they bring the price down. And everybody in the neighborhood was talking about it, but it wasn't a negative conversation whatsoever. It was a conversation like, hey, did you get a call from that agent just telling us that, you know, the price was reduced and if we knew anybody that was interested? So, like, everybody was just kind of interested, actually, in what was happening in the neighborhood. Right. It wasn't like, oh, can you believe this This person bothering us all? It was more right. like, wow, like, right. You know, there's how, I mean, people are nosy. People want to know what's going on yep. in the neighborhood. So I think if, the, and the context of the call helps there too. Like if you've got a listing and that's what you're calling off of, um, people, I mean, my wife especially, I mean, she wants to know every single detail that is transpiring within a mile of our house, no matter what it is. Right. And so, you know, I think just realizing that as you're going into these call sessions, is helpful because you know, you're providing people with with juice, you know, with with some gossip, and like that's that's compelling. Yeah, and uh, so I think at the very least, you're going to get people who are interested. Well, Pat, you know, I, I'd even watch that language too. Now that I Gail just tuned me into language, right? Is that because I've said that to you? So shame on me many times because we were taught the nosy neighbor, and there's a negative connotation to that. How about the curious neighbor? I'm curious. And, and I'm, yeah. I, I'm an expert, yeah. and I'm an expert in this business. I'm curious, but guess what I'm set up on, Pat? I'm set up on what sells in my neighborhood. I act as if I am the avatar. And I'm just curious because I'm so busy. I'm not tuned in every day to what's happening around me immediately that affects me. I'm just curious, and I want to be intelligent as well about this whole thing. So curious and intelligent about the marketplace. Why intelligent? Because I own a property. I wanna be smart. I wanna be a smart property owner and pay attention to trends. And you know, if I'm thinking about selling, am I smartly moving along in the right direction? So curiosity, and, 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 and then I'm gonna take it a step even closer. Community. See, the negative side is nosy, but just community. Hey, congratulations, I saw that you sold your house for this. <laughs> I'm so thankful I wanna hug you. I didn't know our houses were worth that much. So you can go from curiosity to community, and then you all can take that position of the community servant where you become the natural guy and there's no sale involved at all. This is the guy in his company and his group and his team. These are the people that are, are the good stewards of information and they keep us up to date. In fact, I can make an argument, we're one of the most well-versed subdivisions in Seattle because Can't Two Group just keeps showing up in Palo Alto because Gail and this army of helpers, they just keep showing up and they keep telling us something. So you wanna arrive at top of mind consciousness as somebody who's just been serving, there's no competition for that type of a person. There's just not. I mean, don't get Danny, me. you know yeah. what? Go ahead. Danny, this sounds like a good script. Like calling up and saying, hi, I know that you're probably a curious neighbor, and that's why I'm calling you. You got to it. let you know that down the street, we have a listing. But that wording right there, you just made it. That is good language. Nobody's going to go, oh, not another person calling mm -hmm. me about. They're going to go, I'm curious. Of course I'm curious. I want to know. And I, maybe I go, Hey, I'm calling you because I know you're uh, curious about what's happening in your community. I just wanted to let you know this. Uh, if I can help you in any way, please feel free to give me a call. No selling, just, you know, being a community service person. Absolutely. That's what we're doing, community service calling. And, and again, well, you've, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But, but yeah, hang on one second. Yes, Chris, hang on. But you've got to, Gail, you and I and some of the mastermind members are at a level where we really believe this. So it's easy for us to make that adjustment. I think, and I want to speak to all of you who this might sound 
mm, too touchy feely for you, pragmatist, right? I'm telling you, it's gotten, it, it is touchy feely, but it's what people want. It doesn't, doesn't take away your opportunity to be the helper. Can you muscle people to do business with you by being aggressive in scripting? Yes, because in lieu of nobody else being aggressive, plenty of people will decide to use you. But I'll guarantee you, you will burn out and your business won't have the sustainability that it could otherwise have. Use your aggressiveness to be the most aggressive community servant that there's ever been, right? Be aggressively on the phone. Have all your team members doing it, but just change that paradigm. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to go on that. I, I love, you know, I, I love the call and just I wanted to articulate to affirm for myself, get your feedback on, you know, as far as the whole notion of scripting. Yes. I think really what's more important as opposed to having a verbatim script, which is where things become very wooden. It's just having an outline and a guide, and, and, and even, even there, it, then it becomes very conversational. I think what you said about having a reason for calling anybody that you really internalize and believe in, I think that's everything. Because that breaks down the barrier between, I am a sales guy, and someone who's truly going to help, is you, you've got a, a reason that you're reaching out. That's right. And it was either an action, it was either an action taken by them, or valuable information you have to provide. And then, like you said, as far as uh, keeping in mind empathetically what they're doing, might be like is a reason for rejection that you know you got to take that into account too but as far as that from there i would even say i mean what do you think of going back to all of our scripts and just making it as simple as that one outline timing two motivation three and, and not even in specific order just having basically the subject matter because then you can articulate it yeah in look 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 i, look, I, look, I Look, I, th I think it's a great idea in the context of an infographic that sits in front of you. It's your buoy. And this is what I keep saying because I, I, right. I have to deal with as a coach the, the folks that have been taught and have success with scripts. Here's what I'm going to argue to them. You keep presuming it's the script that's being successful. And it's not. It's you. You want me to prove that? Record your phone calls and find out how scripted you actually are. You think you're scripted, but you can't be because the human being, if you make enough of these phone calls, the human being takes you off into a personalized conversation. Now, you do whatever you do to get them back in and get your outcome. So I would make an argument that you still need your North Star. If I'm gonna make some phone, community service phone calls to help people, I still wanna know, are you somebody who would like the next level of help because you're thinking about doing something inside of 12 to 24 months. Are you that person? Because if you are, before I let you go, we have other things. We have deeper levels of help. And, and if you're selling, one of those deeper levels is to personalize the general what to do information when you're selling. And the only way we could do that is to come see you and take the same course we're gonna send you out, walk you through it in your individualized situation and also keep you up to date because you'll be curious between now and when you sell as to the trend of the market. And in a hyper-local way, that's to see what sells immediately around you that's affecting you. So it doesn't just stop at the beginning. It's just this whole understanding of, I see a potential relationship with you if you're interested. And I want to start it this way build the foundation, keep the foundation, and then just constantly tweak it based on you as an individual. See, all this concept, and I told you, know, you probably heard me yesterday with Tony, one of the dangers is that this concept of speed and efficiency is good. If you're gonna make community service calls, I have no problem with a dialer. I have no problem with putting a whole bunch of names in the community there, because if the goal, if the, the, the commandant's intent like Tim says, is to help as many people as pro uh, possible. Nothing wrong with a dialer. Throw them in and call and call and call and call. But the minute you get there, slow down for a minute, right? Slow down and be as authentic and genuine and that desire to serve them there because that will increase the probability that they trust you even incrementally a little bit more and will tell you their true intentions so that you actually save enormous amounts of time. You gain enormous amounts of efficiency to determine, going all the way back to the beginning of the call and what Pat said, is this really a potential continued relationship or not? But what's the worst case? 
in a community servant based mentality. What's the worst case that happens? You left a positive footprint in that person's life and on behalf of your brand. You can't find a better way to brand yourself than to leave a positive footprint. Hey, it looks like you know you really had no intention of selling or you didn't need any more of our services. We just appreciate you taking the time. We hope this is helpful. If you'd like to get on our newsletter, we do send out one that just gives a quick curiosity recap of what happened in the market. Comes out monthly, no obligation, it's free. I'd be happy to add you to that. Sure, no, no problem, look it. If you can think of anybody that might need this kind of help, would you keep us in mind? Sure, hey, thanks, and I'm done. There's no big heaviness to this whole thing. There's no fight. There's no depression at the end. Because I, no matter how I arrive at the end of that phone call, Chris, I arrive with a positive outcome. I've branded and, and been just a good person today. Inside a community that matters or the best result, I got the next step of the relationship and I can really demonstrate how much I know and care on how to do it, right? So I think the beats would be fine, is my summary. I think you could, an infographic that was right. there, right? Maybe oh, we'll work on that next week. Back. Maybe you and I'll, maybe you and I'll do it for the group. Maybe, maybe we do an infographic to work it out. Yeah, go ahead, somebody wanted to say something. Go ahead. No, I was just, I think it was just me. I was just gonna say, yeah, it's just that balance between uh, structured format and plowing ahead and also, you know, keeping things conversational, keeping this, as you said, in the, uh, the work To, uh, to define that as well, right? Because yeah. I know if, if you're a guy like me, you can get lost on help, helping everybody and then you get diffused. So you need to you got it. focus and say, you know what, I help people in this geographic location in this price range with this type of home the best. <clears throat> I'm going to focus on that. So I, if I have someone outside of my uh, area of expertise, I'm still going to help them, but maybe I help them the best by referring that out to someone who knows that territory better. There you go. Don't get yeah. Confused. yeah, there you go. There you go. And that's exactly the way to do this. And so I, I want to leave the call on that, but I want to make sure that I haven't had uh, anybody not get a question answered that they wanted to. This is a very important topic. That's the foundational. But does anybody have another specific thing they're struggling with that they need me for? Okay, hearing none, go practice this stuff. And Campfire um, was really hot. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. And in two weeks, we're going to continue that work. But go out there and try to change the language. Be careful of the negative language we use anywhere in the way we think about the business. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway I have today that I'm going to work on. All right? Enjoy your weekend. You're all the best. Thanks for the participation. See you soon. Thank you. You bet. My pleasure. Thank you.